Good morning and welcome. Let me make sure I'm turned on first. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Does it sound all right? Good morning. Is that better? No, that's worse. <laughs> Good morning. How's that? It says on. Good morning. Are we both on now? Let's try it once more. Are we on now? Wow, we have sound. <laughs> well, good morning to everyone. It's a blessing. It's a privilege. It's an honor to be here with you at Bethel Reformed Church on this Sunday, July 17th. Before we stand for our call to worship, I thought you should spend, we should spend just a minute or two and you can find out a little bit about who I am because I feel like I've spent a lot of time here, but I don't think I've stood this pulpit for many, many years. Uh, my name is Bill Wensink and I'm a, a pastor in the Reformed Church. Um, my first 10 years of ministry were as an associate or youth pastor at Bethel Reformed Church in Abbotsford, same name, and, uh, and then with Pastor John Captain at, Captain at uh, Christ Community Church in Welland, um, the Outreach Reformed Church uh, halfway between Waynefleet and St. Catharines. I grew up in the First Reformed Church of St. Catharines. Uh, the last 22 years, um, I've been a teacher at uh, Heritage Christian School in Jordan when I lived in St. Catharines and Welland. The last few years, I've lived in Hamilton for a little while with my son, who's a teacher at Calvin Christian School, um, so that uh, my wife could watch our grandchildren while they settled into teaching there. And we've lived in Hagersville the last two and a half years, uh, for the day the pandemic started. <laughs> and Kathy, my wife, teaches at Calvin Christian School, junior kindergarten, kindergarten, part-time, full-time, depending on the needs. And I've been at the Jarvis Christian School, at the Branford School, the London School, in the last two or three years doing um, teaching contracts. I really enjoy the opportunity, the blessing, uh, being able to share at different uh, churches for pulpit supply when pastors are on holidays or preaching at vacant churches. We have four of them now we're praying for in uh, Whitby, in um, Guelph, in Stony Creek, and which one did I forget? Stony Creek, Whitby. I'll think of the other one later. <laughs> and um, uh, just a blessing, I want to say greetings from my wife, Kathy, as well. Um, when I'm not preaching somewhere else, sometimes we go to uh, uh, a Reformed Church, a Christian Reformed Church, right almost uh, beside us in Hagersville. So um, my wife and I just accepted teaching contracts, myself three-quarter time at the Jarvis Christian School for the next year, and my wife at Calvin, and it is just a real joy and blessing to be here. Um, two weeks ago, I was chaplain for the first week uh, of Camp Shalom for the, the on-site camp for the, the special needs, the special assistance camp. And what a blessing that was, but a challenge as well with all of the guests there with their different needs and blessings that they shared. This past week at camp, they had the, um, uh, the first uh, full week of the adventure camp with a, a lot of illness, a lot of special needs. A lot of volunteers were needed, but by the grace of God, the needs there were met. Keep uh, camp in prayer. Um, I'm on the board. I was chairman of the board, and now I'm um, kind of in between chairman as we, uh, we have another chairman coming. And uh, just looking forward to, to God's leading and your continued prayers and support for the summer. So I think I've covered most of the, uh, the welcomes and announcements. Let's turn to uh, worshiping our Lord. And as I do so, I'd like to share a few verses. I'd like to share as our greeting and call to worship, uh, asking us to stand first and then reading a few verses from Psalm 95 and Psalm 122. Let's stand. In Psalm 95, we hear... Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Psalm 122. I rejoice with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your, at your gates. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth, Grace to you and peace in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Let's sing together, love divine, all love excelling. 92. Let's come before God in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that when you described your house, you called it a house of prayer, that your people could worship you. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of being able to worship you here in freedom, in peace, in joy, in hope, in expectation, but also, Lord, being reminded of how much we need your grace, the fellowship with one another, hearing and, and, uh, and applying your word. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for all of the ways that you have called us in your creation, your word, and your world to worship you this morning. And we pray, Lord, that our worship would be pleasing and acceptable to you. We pray, Lord, that as we worship you, we would realize that we're part of a great fellowship of believers. Other churches here in Brantford, other parts of the Reformed Church, other parts of your body here in Ontario, in Canada, and in the world, Lord, we stand with believers from long ago and believers now who worship you in spirit and in truth, who worship you in need, in places where, where food or peace doesn't exist. Lord, we, we just pray that you would guide all of your people who gather in worship this day. And Lord, be with Pastor Stephen and his family who are on holidays for another week. Pastor Jim as he leads in worship next week. And with ourselves, Lord, may our worship, our service, our praise to you be pleasing and acceptable to you, you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So I'd like to share in our Psalter reading uh, one verse from 1 John 4, verse 10. That's our second verse. That's our, our theme for camp, our theme for the morning. And I'd like to share the 23rd Psalm. Um, 
When I think of the 23rd Psalm, I especially want to challenge you to read it the way it is in God's word, of course. But when it says, the Lord is my shepherd, consider reading it sometime. But when you hear the word my, realize that it's personal. It's David's psalm to God, but we can take out the word my and put our own names in there and ask ourselves when we take it personally, what it means and realize how much it means to us. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then from 1 John 4, verse 10. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen. There are so many ways that God calls us to himself. God calls us to himself through creation, through his word. Romans 1 verse 20. Since the foundation of the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his nature, have been seen by what he has created so that men are without excuse. In other words, there's no reason to say we don't know that there's a God or a plan or a purpose. I don't know about you, but quite often, I forget that. We get overwhelmed with worries or concerns in the world or in our family or in ourselves. Or the opposite. We have joys and blessings we're looking forward to. I'm sure looking forward to the, the celebration of my youngest grandson turning one today, being with family. And the way here, instead of maybe thinking more about the service and the worship time, I found myself looking forward to that. Yes, but sometimes... Joys, sometimes concerns, sometimes blessings, and sometimes heartaches prevent us from putting God first. So at this time and this place, we're going to confess our sins before Almighty God and ask that he help us to see him and his leading, his comfort, his power, and his reigning over creation and our lives first. And let's make sure that he's first in our hearts and lives once again as we come before him in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we read in your word, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But Lord, the very next verse says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we pray that we would hear your call to confession. Lord, the times we've ignored you or we have not put you first, the times we've said and done things we shouldn't have or done things we shouldn't have or done other things first. Lord, we pray that we would be a clean vessel for your word, your spirit's leading. We pray that we could truly come before you with clean hands and a pure heart. Lord, we pray that you would receive our worship and praise and that we would hear the assurance of your forgiveness from your word and by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. The verses I shared in prayer were from 1 John 1, verses 8 and 9. A little bit further in 1 John 2, verses 1, 2, and 12, we read this. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. 
But if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Verse 12, 1 John 2. I write to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. I write to you fathers, I write to you young men, I write to you mothers, I write to you dear children. All about the forgiveness of our sins in Jesus' name. Let's receive this promise and walk as he calls us to. One time a man came to Jesus and said, what do I need to do? What, what, what's the greatest law? What, what summarizes your calling for us? And Jesus said to him, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Amen. Love lifted me. Let's stand for that. 505. And then I'm not sure if the children come forward for a children's message during that time. I don't see any children here, but I will share a short children's message um, after that, whether there's children who watch us online, whether there's children here, but we're all children of God, and sometimes that's the part of the service we remember the most. So let's share in singing, and then I will share a children's message. We'll stand for Love Lifted Me.
So is this a good place to do the children's message from? I hope it doesn't make you do extra work with the camera back there, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the first week of the summer of the Camp Shalom program, I was blessed to be able to share with the special, I'm not going to call it special needs anymore, I'm going to call it special abilities or special gifts. And tell the camp it's not, to, not going to be special needs anymore because the compassion, the love, the, the sharing that those campers uh, shared with us was just incredible. But the week before that, I was thinking about preaching here already, and I was thinking about that week of camp, and I thought, I really have to have a lot of illustrations and examples to share. So I was walking through our little town of Hagersville, and like you might see in a lot of little towns, there was a blue bin at the side of the road. I'm not talking about a, a trash bin. I'm talking about those blue bins on it, and I think this one said, uh, for the camp... Um, for the, uh, the camp of the deaf. They don't use the word for anymore. It's camp of the deaf. And I happen to see that camp. I, I know where that is now, now near, um, near Perry Sound, near the Whitestone area. And so when I saw that bin that people put their leftover garage sale items in or things they no longer use that can be sold so that money can be raised for these different ministries or missions by that big um, bin, that big steel bin uh, by the side of the road a couple doors down from me in Hagersville, I saw something laying near the base of it. It had been recently emptied, and, and what I saw there laying near the base of it um, inspired me with something I wanted to share with you. What I saw laying there was a couple pieces of Lego and a couple puzzle pieces. And I thought, oh, that's too bad. That was probably some Lego that people donated or a puzzle, and it's, it's missing a piece. It's missing some of the Lego that somebody had donated and is just laying there a couple feet away from the, the can on the ground. And... But at the same time, I had been thinking, what can I share for an illustration at camp or for a children's message here? And I think there's a promise in the Bible, and I have to find out where it is again. I, I couldn't find it this morning quick enough, that basically says the Holy Spirit will give you the answers that you need in the right time, or the Holy Spirit will bring to remembrance Scripture. And really, these pieces of Lego and this puzzle piece reminded me of two things. It reminded me of the fact when I saw the Lego and there was a plan behind that, or the puzzle, there's a plan behind a puzzle that the puzzle maker had made and then it stamped out and sold to everyone. And when I thought about the creativity that Lego calls us to, uh, I'm a primary teacher and have done that for many, many years and will continue to do so. And I know that some of these are even in my classroom. But when I saw these, I, I started thinking about Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This children's toy section reminded me of the plans God has for us, his good and perfect plan. And it brought me to what I wanted to share at camp and here. But there was another verse that it brought to mind in my, in my heart. And that's from Psalm 139. Do you know Psalm 139? I'm sure if, if, if you hear a couple of phrases from it, you'll remember it. And that is, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made knit together in my mother's womb. God, again, has a plan. God is the creator, and his creation points us to a plan that the creator has. There's a design around us in creation, in nature, in the human body, in, in, in things man-made, in things God-made. And that design, that plan, God ordained for us before creation. Before you were created, I knit you together in your mother's womb. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that full well. So when you see puzzle pieces, when you see Lego pieces, be reminded that there's a creator behind the creation. There's a designer behind the design. We have a good and faithful God when things sometimes become overwhelming, whether it's all the little things or the big things of life or the challenges or the physical things. And when you see a puzzle or puzzle pieces, there's a design, there's a plan, and we're part of it. We just can't see the whole picture now. And so I'm just going to share a prayer now, a prayer for illumination in what I share in Scripture and what the Holy Spirit brings to us. And I'm going to pray for the, the children, the grandchildren of this congregation, the ones that you are reaching, the ones that you will reach, the ones you'll reach with the program here in a few weeks, the ones I was blessed to, uh, to share with last summer, when you had one of the very first uh, mobile camps here. 
And now and then we had, uh, we had kids running through here, but we were mostly in the, the, the area there and outside, but what a blessing to share with that time here. Let's pray for camp and Camp Shalom. Let's pray for your children and your grandchildren, your foster children. Let's pray for those who have special needs and that their teachers and leaders in the church, in the community, in their schools. Let's come before him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of children. Lego pieces and puzzle pieces that draw us to remember that you have a design and a plan. That you call us to be creative. We can build things with Lego, yes, but we can make things in your world too, as so many things and occupations tell us about. Lord, be with our children, be with the grandchildren and the foster children of this congregation. Be with the children that are reached already and those that will be reached through the Camp Shalom program here in a few weeks those who are ministered to at camp this past week, the week before, and the coming week. Lord, be with Camp Shalom, with the different leaders, with Tim and with Adrian, with Ryan, with Joyhanna, with Kim, with all of the others, with Dan and with Jody. Lord, those who work at camp as volunteers, those who work part-time, those who work full-time there, those who are the summer staff there. Guide them as just in a few hours. At four o'clock this afternoon, they gather for for prayer and the opening and getting ready for the, 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 the boys and girls, the, uh, those who are coming, for the third week already. It's hard to believe we're two weeks in and six weeks to go with the Camp Shalom program. And Lord, in just a moment, we're going to open your word, the Bible here. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless the reading and the understanding of it. Your Holy Spirit, Lord, gave your word, your word to us thousands of years ago. We pray that your same Holy Spirit would open up our understanding of it, that we would learn with our minds, that we would learn with our hearts, that we would learn and apply with our hands and our feet and our voices what you call us to do and be. We pray, Lord, that not only ourselves here, but that your Holy Spirit might move in a mighty way, that your word might change lives all over this city, province, country, and world. Lord, thank you for this day set aside, for your word given, the Bible, but most of all for the precious gift of your word made flesh through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray indeed that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be pleasing and acceptable to you, you, O Lord, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. So the word of the Lord for this morning, um, a few of the verses I shared at camp and a few of the verses that build on that with the theme of foundational love, God's hand is out. And the last verse I will read is a very hard verse because of what it meant for people then and what it means for us now. But let's apply it in the way we are called to. So we're going to begin with 1 John 4 verses 7 to 17. And then a few verses from Romans 5 and 10, beginning with, ending with Romans uh, 10, verse 21. So the word of the Lord, you've already heard the theme verse, uh, begins at 1 John 4, verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Reminds you of John 3.16, doesn't it? Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone 
acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him, and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world, we are like him. Then several sections of verses from Romans 5. Romans 5, verses 6 to 8. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And then Romans chapter 10, verses 8, 9, and 21. Romans 10. But what, what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith we are proclaiming, that if we confess, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And now verse 21, the hard verse. But concerning Israel, he said, all day long I have held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. The word of the Lord, and may he add his blessing to all who hear and who read and who apply it. Amen. At this time, we're going to, uh, to hear the word of the Lord. And uh, just as a reminder, after the message, we'll share in the Apostles' Creed a hymn and prayers and prayer requests. The word of the Lord. I was really touched by these verses. I think that, that sometimes the greatest blessing comes when you, when you share and you give yourself. And I, I looked at these verses for a good while in the chaplain's package they sent to me for the, that first week of camp. And as I was thinking and praying about this, it really was Lego and puzzle pieces in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and Psalm 139, verse 13 that really called me to take a look at the foundational love of God for us. Sometimes we, we leave church feeling guilty. We can always pray more. We can always serve more. We can always give more. We've missed the mark in different ways, but, but I think sometimes we miss the foundation. We miss the simple foundation of, for God so loved the world he gave. The world began with a loving God who had a plan that went beyond himself. We read so clearly that for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities are being, are being seen by the things he's made all around us. Creation, though it's silent, screams about a design and a plan and a creator and a creation. And we know in our hearts and lives that we are all called to, to worship something or someone can we really look at all of creation and say, this is just evolution, this is just a happenstance? No. It really does begin with foundational love. Even in that last hard verse, all day long I have held out my hand, O Israel. That includes us. All day long God holds out his hand to us. His, hands, his hand of, of love and support and his creation and, and what's around us. All day long he holds out his hand but it's a hand that's meant to be grasped. It's a hand that's given because of our great need. We're created, it says, with almost with a, with, a, with a hole in our hearts, how much we need that love. Every day of creation. I'm sure you've heard this many times. One, two, three, four, five days of creation. God created the heavens and the earth, 
and it was good. Then the, the crown of creation, the, one, the only part of God's creation that has the breath of God in it, the only part of creation made in the image of God, mankind, day six. And on that day of creation, it was very good. And then the Lord rested, and there was the seventh day, and that's why we're called here to worship the Lord on the Sabbath day, the seventh day. Well, with the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the worship was changed from the Sabbath day to the first day of the week. That's when people gathered, and that's why we're here. And it's the foundational love of God the Father, shown most perfectly and completely in the gift of his Son, and then shown in God living with us in the ascension of Jesus Christ, but then the gift of the Holy Spirit given to us, the foundational love of God. God's hand is out. But you know, we also have to just look not only at the goodness of God, but, but the truth of who we really are. Yes, we're God's creation. Yes, we're created to worship, to serve. We're created because of his great love, but yeah, the truth of Romans 3.23 and 6.23 really have to become part of who we are too. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. And we need to realize how great it was, and those verses are, are echoed in these verses in John 1 verse 4. There's an echoing back to one of my favorite verses, Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5. In the fullness of time, at just the right time, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a virgin, born under the law, that we might receive and believe. I'm going to read the exact verses of that. I had it memorized, but I just had it twisted around in my mind a little bit. So let me read the... the the parallel to one of the verses I read here from Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5, we read, But when the time had fully come, God's perfect creation, our sin, but when the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. You know, with the special needs camp, every day I had a, a game I brought up, something I showed. I had the Lego, yes, I had a puzzle, but I also had a puzzle with me, a puzzle of Canada, a simple puzzle. I had a, Lego, a huge Lego box with me. But, you know, I also brought uh, some connects with me. You know, those RA, those, those games where you've got the sticks and you've got little connectors. I brought some connects with me, and I brought some linking baskets with me to show too basically talking about how even though God is perfect and made things perfect and we are sinful and there's no coming together, God gave the only way, truth, and the life that can connect us with the Father, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Don't ever stop at just the goodness of God. Don't ever stop at just your own sin. Yes, it's foundational love, but then there's a hand reaching out, that last verse from, uh, that I shared from Romans 10, verse 21. The hand is reaching out all day long. Why? Because of the way that we need the only way to connect the goodness of God with the great need that we have. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So God calls with his creation, his plan, his John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son. Love comes from God, he's the source. Every good and perfect gift is from above, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. But yet we're created to be dependent, fully dependent on God. I don't know about you, but too often I, I rely on my own self-reliance, my own self-focus, my own feeling sometimes of entitlement, but faith begins with God's love for us. And then we move from this and we realize that our sin and God's love and his gift of Jesus Christ calls us to respond. Don't be like the people of Israel. All day long I held up my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. But let's stop 
And let's realize once again that God calls us by the leading of his spirit in us. He calls us to respond to the greatest gift this world has ever seen. The gift of Jesus Christ, his son, our savior. Let's stop again, or maybe begin again, with God's love for us. Too often we end with the things we need. We need to pray or read the Bible more or share our faith. But the goal of Sunday morning isn't to instill a, a happy, 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 God is, is all love feeling, but it's not the opposite, that we should live in guilt and shame and feeling uh, inferior. The goal in worship is to worship our Creator, our Redeemer, our Savior, to worship the one who created us to be in a relationship with Him. Yes, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Read verse 17 as well, the next one. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. And not only life, but John 10, verse 10. I've come that they might have life and have it to the full, have it abundantly. Then we're called to respond with the working of the Holy Spirit in us. How great it was to, uh, to share with games with the campers. And I think one of the games I shared with them was the game of concentration, where you try to connect things, right? You turn two cards over. Are they the same? They match. You keep them. Are they not the same? You leave them there. We're called to connect with God's word, God's spirit, God's leading. The putting on and the putting off of Colossians. We're called to connect that the pieces of what God calls us, how he calls us to live, that his spirit grows more and more in us. And I think one of the things I, I ended with was the Psalm, Psalm 23, making it personal. But I also ended with, with making a game called Tumbling Towers. Have you ever seen it? It's also called Jenga. Do you know the game? Jenga or Tumbling Towers? You, you take three or four wooden blocks and you put them this way, and then three 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 this way, and you build a tower. The game of Jenga. Tumbling blocks. I'd like to borrow Camp Shalom's for my class this fall if they'll let me. Because the big ones are kind of expensive, but they're a lot of fun. They're really neat. So then what you do is you, you pull out a block and you put it on top. And you can do that because there's three blocks. So you can pull out the middle one easily and put it on top. Or you can try to pull out the two edge ones, but then the whole tower above it is just resting on that one. It's a game that you play until eventually the winner is the, the one who doesn't make the, 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 the tower tumble. So you pull out the blocks, put them on top, and the one who makes the tower tumble, well, they're not the winner. <laughs> the winner's the one who didn't make the tower tumble. But what I had below there, once this tower tumbles, just a little few blocks are left, I had a piece of paper there. Let me tell you very clearly that everyone's tower is going to tumble. Maybe yours has. Maybe it is tumbling right now. Maybe it did tumble. Maybe it will tumble. We'll all have that time when... The plans, the ideas, the thoughts, the health, the family issues just become too big and it seems like our life tumbles down. Even though we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the finances, the health, the family issues, it's just, it's just tough. It's just not working. It just comes crashing down. But you know, underneath this tumbling tower, I had a piece of paper there with big letters and I had printed on it something very simple. Something very simple. Probably the words of the first song you ever sung. Do you remember it? The first song you ever sung. I'm going to guess what it is. And I think I'll guess right. It's this one. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. What's our foundation? The Word of God. What's the foundation? Jesus loves me, this I know. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Sing it to your grandkids. Some kids don't know that song anymore. But it really is the foundation. God's love for us. God's handout for us. His Spirit's call that we respond. And what a blessing it is to realize that foundational love, to know that his hand is still stretching out until he returns. His hand is stretching out. We're called to respond. We're called to grow as Christians, grow in the faith, grow in our receiving of his love and grace, and grow in our sharing of it, however God calls you to, in prayer, in service. 
Be prepared at any time to give an answer for the reason for the faith that lies within you. Be people who pray the Lord's Prayer that we're going to pray in just a few minutes. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Wow. How do we do that? We come before God. We look at his word. We talk with other Christians. And we live that out. But start, please, with the foundational love of God that he has for you. And realizing that his hand still reaches out. In whatever way your Jenga tumbling towers has, has, has fallen down, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Well, my watch band broke this past week, and I didn't have my cell phone with me because it rang at an inappropriate time, so I don't know if I've gone extra short or extra long, but it's the time to say amen and to come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your foundational love that comes to us through your word, your world, your son, our savior, your spirit's leading, the way we can hear the other Christians around us. But Lord, we also realize how we've missed the mark. But yet, Lord, your hand is out. And your hand is out to a disobedient and obstinate people. It's, hand, it's, it's out all day long. Lord, may we grow in understanding your great love for us, our great need for you, and our calling to receive and to share that great love. Thank you, Lord, for the, the one foundation of your church that we can sing about, and your faith, the faith of your people given as people gather together and shared in the Apostles' Creed. Thank you, Lord, for that gift. Amen. Let's stand and share in the Apostles' Creed and the church's one foundation hymn. And together with the church of old, let's say with heart and mouth, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven. And seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Church is one foundation. Let's sing it together.
This is the time to share the prayers of God's people and prayer requests. And I've got a few I'd like to share with you, and then I'll give an opportunity for you to raise your hand and share what you may have too. First of all, with Marie and Fred and Yanni, we want to pray for their extended family with the passing away of um, Marie and Yanni's niece this past week. We also want to continue to pray for the uh, ministry of Camp Shalom, which we have already. Uh, we want to pray for God's leading for the different ministries that you have this summer, whether it's through your, through your book and yard sale, whether it's through the um, ministries and missions you support, through the mobile camp that will be taking place here August 8th to 12th, for which it would still be a, a blessing to have more people come as uh, volunteers for that. Continue to pray for Pastor Stephen, who's away on holidays for a another week, and for Pastor Jim Vellinga, who will be sharing next Sunday. Um, I'm not sure if there are any other announcements that should be shared, or any other prayer concerns or joys, but please uh, raise your hand and let us know if you have something you'd like to share at this time, and we'll make sure and gather together in prayer for it, or be thankful with you about that. Prayer, joys, concerns, or needs. Yes. I just want to thank this congregation for the 50 years I've spent here, and this week we'll be moving to Whitby. That's where we started out, but it's, I've had a lot of blessings here. Everybody is so faithful and so great, but it's a difficult move. Thank you. So Nellie and Ben are moving to, um, to Whitby uh, in, uh, later in July. So we pray for God's Tuesday. blessing in your move. Tuesday. And I, on Tuesday. Wow. <laughs> That's going to come fast. I pray the move would go, go well, and I pray that you would continue to be blessed and be a blessing in Whitby. I'm sure the Reformed Church there will look forward to uh, having you in its membership. Uh, today is Nora's birthday, first off. Whose birthday is it? Nora's. Nora, happy birthday from all of us. Happy birthday, Nora. Okay. And um, thinking about her, I'd like to give thanks and ask prayer for uh, church organizations who organize and sponsor refugees, such as Nora with the uh, Anglican Primates Fund, and it's because of their work that she's here, and that may God continue to bless organizations like that. We will uh, pray. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll pray for those uh, refugee organizations, organizations especially, and, especially and the church ones. Especially, uh, yes, especially the church ones, and, yes. and especially with what's going on in Ukraine, because we hear of people from um, mm -hmm. Ukrainian backgrounds who are coming here too. Thank mm -hmm. you. And also, I'd like to add, a few weeks ago I asked for prayer for the Rohingyas. They keep coming up. Uh, uh, people that are persecuted in Sri Lanka, not Sri Lanka, sorry, Myanmar, which used to be Burma, and um, I heard about them again on the news, which just reminded me that um, let's pray for them. I know some Christian organizations are involved in relief in their camps in Pakistan and Bangladesh. So let's remember the Rohingyas and the persecution that they yes. face in their home country where they've settled now for hundreds of years of Burma and Myanmar. And there's always an ant. Uh, my granddaughter is staying with me and she's doing a course in world religions for school and she's doing Buddhism, which made me look at the Buddhist temples, two of them that I know of in London, and also which made me think of Burma because a lot of the persecution is led by Buddhist monks in Burma and Buddhism is growing here. So let's pray that our churches would have an outreach to the Buddhists here in Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you for your prayer concerns and requests. And uh, the Lord honors those who pray in their hearts, who share their prayers. And keep in mind, when you share a need, you share that. And the need gets divided among God's people. But when you share your joys, it is shared among God's people as well. 
We praise God for those. And also when you pray, make sure that you also pray that God would not only use people and his spirits leading, but maybe you can be an answer to someone's prayer as well by what you hear and how you respond and how you pray. So let's come before God in prayer, concluding with uh, saying the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of prayer that we can share in together, the prayers of your people. Lord, we pray that you would be with uh, Maria, with Fred, with Yanni, uh, as they mourn the loss of their niece. Be with the family that surrounds them also. Lord, be with Pastor Stephen and his family as they're away on holidays, with Pastor Jim as he's here next Sunday. Lord, we want to pray and thank you for the celebrations we can have. Today's Nora's birthday. It's also my, grand, my youngest grandson's first birthday today as well. Be with people who celebrate the joy of the passing of time and seasons and life that you've given. Lord, we pray that you'd be with the different refugee sponsoring groups, particularly those in churches and Christian base, that you would guide them in what they do. Lord, the persecuted church is so great. We pray, Lord, that you would uh, protect those Christians with their leaders and the government agencies and the, and the, and the Christian churches that, that stand in the gap to pray for those who are being persecuted. Lord, we pray for the outreach of our churches, outreach in communities, outreach among neighbors, neighbors far and near. Lord, help us to be a people who always recognize the blessings that we have been given and truly look for ways that we can share wisely the blessings that you've given. Lord, I pray that you'd be with the different ministries and missions of your church here. Your church as the individuals and the bodies of Christ reach out in your name. Lord, we pray for those in the Ukraine. Lord, we pray that that, that fighting with aggression would soon stop, that people can rebuild that families can come back together, that they can mourn the losses that have taken place and look to the future in hope and trust in you, especially, Lord, be with the Christian ministries and outreaches there and here that are reaching out to those there and those who've been able to escape, that they might find a safe place. Lord, I pray that uh, you would be with the aggressors the world over, that you, through your spirits leading and through the 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 force of your spirit, but also the uh, other government um, and countries may, may be part of stopping that. Lord, I pray that you'd be with your people who don't have enough food or don't have a place to worship or who have such great needs beyond what we could ever imagine. Lord, we pray that you would continue to be with the needs here at the church for the greeters and the nursery caregivers and, and those who are needed to help in different ways too, that they might come forward. Lord, continue to be with the Why Not Youth Center with its different needs, with the Pregnancy and Resource Center in Brant. Lord, we pray that you'd especially be with those who are traveling on the roads in this summertime, keep them in your care, especially, Lord, with Nellie and Ben, who expect to move in the next few days from Brantford to Whitby. Guide them in their move, Lord, that they might be surrounded by people who can help them and pray for them, and may they be blessed and be a blessing in Whitby. Lord, we continue to pray for Camp Shalom as we have already, for the different uh, leaders and staff and volunteers and campers and guests of all kinds who come there. Give them the health and strength they need as they prepare for week three in just a few hours. And Lord, be with the Camp Shalom ministry that will take place here. Lord, we pray now that you would guide us in all that we do as we continue to sing your praises, as we continue to receive your blessing, as we continue to share it, as we continue to come before you with our offerings. And Lord, now guide us as we pray together the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. At this time, the deacons will receive the tithes and offerings that have been set aside for the Lord in the past week or weeks.
Let's stand for the prayer and the benediction. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come before you with tithes and offerings. Lord, we thank you that all that we have, every good and perfect gift is from you, from above. Lord, thank you that you call us to respond. First of all, with hearts and lives given to you because you've given us your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that we can come before you with tithes and offerings. And I pray, Lord, that these gifts would be multiplied just like you did with the loaves and fishes. Lord, I pray that these gifts would uh, be used by the deacons of this church to meet the needs of this church and the ministries we are called to. And Lord, may these gifts truly be a sign of our hearts and lives given to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You are a people of faith and of hope and of love. You've come to worship and now go out to serve and receive the benediction. Hear these words of the Lord to Moses. Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you're to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.